Tengo, tengo la camisa negra, porque negra tengo el alma. Yo por ti perdí la cama y casi pierdo esta cama. Come on, come on, come on, baby. Te digo con disimulo que tengo la camisa negra de mi baja. Tengo el difunto. We have to stop because if not, the copyright is going to kill yeah. my channel. Mm -hmm. Bienvenidos a un nuevo video de Guitarra Iba. Hoy tengo una invitada súper, súper especial. Jen está aquí. Y Jen Majura. Eh, ¿Es Majura? Jen Majura. Jen Majura. Majura. Hey, this is the first time on a Spanish speaking channel. Yeah. So it's Jen Majura. Majura. Jen Majura. Estoy súper emocionado. Vamos a charlar un poco de todo, un poco de guitarra, un poco de vida. Y ella nos va a enseñar. Dos o tres trucos, dos o tres leaks, eh, y a partir de ahora voy a hablar en inglés. So, I'm very impressed about your playing, about your, your career, and I'm very interested right now in, in, in your solo career, because uh, you released a new song uh, um, not, not so long ago, no? Well, I, I released one song for fun, um, but I'm right now taking some time off to write my third solo album. I have uh, my second solo album, Insanity, came out in 2017. So I think it's time for finally writing the third solo album. So I'm excited <laughs> about this because I don't know what it's going to sound like. Maybe it's going to be a mixture of meditational deathcore metal. I don't know. Maybe some instrumental, maybe with vocals. Um, yeah, I'm excited. So uh, how... And why did you start playing guitar? Because it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> um, actually, my dad is a bass player. Uh -huh. And so I knew at the age of four, five, that I want to become a musician. I started out with playing the piano. But then I realized you can't really run around and, you know, a piano was not so much my thing. So I can play a little. But then at the age of six, I discovered the guitar and it's the love of my life. Yeah. What's, what's the first song you start to play? Oh my God, I think it was Paul McCartney, Hope yeah. of Deliverance. Oh, it's great not, song. that's not even a Beatles song. It was like. Uh, that was the first song I ever played, and my dad was teaching it to me, so. <laughs> I'm a super fan of the Beatles. Me or, too. Yeah. Me too. That's always the big question Rolling Stones or Beatles? Beatles. Beatles. For me, so. <laughs> me too. Can you tell me how was the trip from beginning of six year? Uh, playing guitar so until today that you have become a rock star you have your own <laughs> guitar unicorn guitar it's yeah my pretty, unicorn it's pretty nice guitar <laughs> and you have sponsors uh, that's like the dream for every guitar player i think you know your goal when you start to do music as an up and coming player should not be fame money or any of these kind of things you should be into music because of music and the love for creating art and music and that will if you keep believing in yourself and you keep working hard um, that will automatically one day lead to a certain amount of level where you out of a sudden find yourself and you're like what really <laughs> I mean um, it's been pretty crazy I played in an ACDC tribute band for four years back in the days and I honestly I was carrying my gear. I was driving 20 hours in the car, doing sound checks, sleeping in youth hostels. So I did all that. I did merchandise on a tour. I did tour managing. I did guitar tech, stagehand. So if you're kind of like aware with the whole business and you are very aware of the fact that you want to be an artist and communicate with the audience and play music for them and have that energy exchange with people, um, that's... You know, I think all the other things like Jet Set Life or big audiences or awesome, amazing companies that I'm allowed to work with, that comes with time and is like the extra plus on top. But what you really should be thankful and grateful for is that you're actually able to do what you do. And um, when was the first concert that you were playing in front of a large audience and you guys, okay, this is going very... Hukes. Okay, I lost my mind the first time I played this German festival called Wacken because I was uh, just guest vocals for one song with the German metal band, but it was 120,000 people <laughs> and I was my I was wearing like a dress, but underneath the dress my legs were like this. <laughs> I was shaking, I was scared. It was like, "Oh my god, there's so many people." And it was exciting, you know? It's like it's not like 
fear. It's not like negative being scared, but it's exciting. And you're like excited to go on stage and you see all these happy faces and everybody's like enjoying the moment. And that's why why I love live music, because you can connect with people, you know. Um, did you ever have an uh, embarrassment moment on the inside uh, a tour or, not, or playing live? I don't know. Maybe... <laughs> Uh, jump it down and oh yeah it <laughs> i uh, i fell off stage several yeah. times um <laughs> with my acdc tribute band you know you you turn around and the stage is really small and you turn around to your drummer and you make one step too much and then you fall off the stage into the audience happened to me or i was jumping from monitor wedge to monitor wedge and the last jump was without a monitor wedge so i jumped literally off stage i did all that so you know And what can you tell me about your guitar routine, your practice routine? Do you still keep practice or I not practice? <laughs> or are you living for the rent? I wish I would practice as much as I want to practice because I think it's very important to keep up your skills that you actually spend time with your instrument, not playing or working, but, you know, practicing, like practicing to a metronome, which is very important. I'm not a big fan of it, I must say, but it's important. Um, so... Literally for warm ups, I do the typical, it's not special, but. <laughs> Stuff like that, just to get your blood flood going. Yeah. And then sometimes I just like to noodle around a little bit. So just for getting into the vibe of playing and getting, getting your tone into your fingers. But for practicing, honestly, I would love to practice way more than I actually do. And it's mostly left right coordination um what i'm or sometimes like um economical picking and stuff like that i sometimes spend uh let's say two three hours learning a song so i did covers of aristocrats steve Vai, um i don't know satriani all kinds of like i pick out a cool song and i cover it because i don't like to call it practicing but i like to call it spending time with your instrument yeah. so if you learn a song that is written by somebody else, you always learn something. I, I learned a lot when I was playing Richie Cotson tracks or Guthrie Govan tracks, you know, and you, you kind of like peek into their brain and you understand, oh, this is how they write. And that's the way I like to practice and spend time with my instrument. Yeah. So can, can you give me a few, your favorite licks? So can you show to our audience some of your favorite licks or fakes or hmm. something? There's something you want to show? To show them? Okay. Um, how about this? Like the first lick when I discovered when you take the pentatonic, yeah. right? Typical A minor pentatonic. And this is, you, you can play this and then you're proud and you're like, yeah, I can improvise now. <laughs> this is cool. And you go like all that. But then you realize, oh, wait a minute. There's another pattern. And then you have the third one. And so on. And then the first time I realized I can combine these three and literally move from the third fret on the E string up to here. That was a cool moment for me. So uh, let's see. How do I do this? Ha. You got it. Okay. So we're in A minor. pretty easy but I like it a lot because it's it's octaves of the same thing mm -hmm. which makes it sound like very <laughs> would you like to try <laughs> I, I can try Yay! <laughs> uh, you need to give me your pick? picks yeah because it's in my here Yay! <laughs> it's easy right <laughs> Very nice guitar. Thank you. I love, Thank you. I love the colors. Yeah, this is uh, made by Steve Weiss' um, friend, David Bonvillain, and he did Steve's guitar with the swirl. And the the neon parts here, they are illuminated in uh, black light. So it, it looks pretty cool. I recently played a, a charity show in Italy, and we had black light on stage. That was the first time when I saw it in black lights. <laughs> I'm pretty proud. How does it feel to have your own... Guitar, yes. Well, this one exists only once. <laughs> this is a one, 
of a lifetime guitar. You will never ever see a guitar like this again, except I play it because it's mine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's just really special. I was shaking when um, I I put the whole every every part like everything into like a little box, and I shipped only the body and the neck to Colorado to David. And when he shipped it back to me, I was like like this in front of the package, and I unboxed it, and I'm like. It's really exciting. And I called her the unicorn. So, And my favorite feature is Steve Vai has signed it. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I love him. We hung out. He played in um, Germany during his European run. And we hung out for yes. a little while and talked life. And I was I was with, with him le, le, in Spanish tour and European tour. Nice. I, I had an interview with him. It's, you can feel his energy. It's like the peace. Everything's yeah. nice. Steve is amazing. Steve is probably yeah. one of the most Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. <laughs> I'm sure you're watching this. <laughs> one, one of the most influential and um, inspiring artists out there. I, I just love his music. I, I loved his music ever since I heard him the first time at the age of nine, ten. When everybody else was listening to boy bands and hero dance chart music, I was going for Steve Vai, Passion Warfare, Sex and Religion. And I just love the guy. It's great. And that leads me to another link. Yeah. Um, a lot of people tell me that my playing sounds Vi influenced and I'm not sure I, I don't see myself like that but I used to play a lot of like mm -hmm. harmonics that is mainly coming from my good friend Matthias Ia Eklund from the Swedish band Free Kitchen and I learned a lot of like and then the last one you get another octave here at the 17th fret Great. So that's like, I thought, well, I play a lot of harmonics in my solos and, and when I improvise. So maybe that's why everybody says I sound like Steve Vai, because I, I could never, I could never sound like Steve, never. But then I realized I like to play a certain kind of like thing when I, when I am in E minor. <laughs> And then it comes this one. And it's a simple downscale on the G string. And I watched some Steve Vai content and out of a sudden he was playing exactly that. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's what I always play. <laughs> so maybe that's another reason why people tell my, my, my melody writing is related to Steve. I don't know. So anyway, yeah. it's a nice compliment. So Jen, thank you for your time. Thank I, you. I would like to ask you a final question. It's not related with music. It's related with life. What's my favorite food? For example. Everything Thai that my dad cooks. <laughs> right, right. But another thing. And paella. Paella. <laughs> what, what is for you the most important thing in life? Peace and love. Peace and love people. Yeah. Right. And music. And paella. <laughs> And enjoying and having rock. And rock. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. So, That was fun. fun. Nos vemos en el próximo video, amigos. Y nada, a pasarlo bien, a guitarrear y por supuesto a seguir a Jen en sus redes sociales, también en su canal de, de YouTube. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nos vemos en el próximo video o en Guitarra Iba, amigos. Hasta luego. Bye, ya.